She, who is valorized for seeking happiness beyond the immortal solitude, for chasing a fate that clings to another's, the magnetization of centuries old love. Her hair mangled in wild hissing knots, crimped and curled with forked tongues, accused by averted gazes of her violent nature. She who cannot be wound like clockwork, with a mouth painted into a compliant smile, is deemed cold, unsympathetic, and inhuman. At the beginning of the universe, there was a great battle among immortals, humans, and monsters, which caused enormous chaos. In order to restore order and peace, the supreme ruler of the heavens, Jade Emperor, ordered two of his opposing generals to send their warriors to end the war. Instead, the two warriors, Su Shen and Fa Hai, engaged in fierce and bloody combat that led to even greater chaos. In order to calm things down, the generals came to an agreement. These two warriors would compete in a single combat in one thousand years. The general whose warrior wins would become the right hand of the Jade Emperor. The day of the battle arrived on Joshi Mountain. Sushen attacked Fahai, mortally wounding him. Fahai's eyes fell upon the white snake, whose heart he knew had life-saving powers. Fahai attempted to kill the white snake. However, Sushen came to white snake's rescue, even though he himself was fatally wounded. Since I have the power to decide the life and death of every living being... I have reincarnated Su Shen as a human, but his soul has taken one thousand years to mature. My disciple, the White Snake, offered to take care of his soul during these many years in repayment for saving her life. Heavenly Mother, Queen of the Immortals. I have heard this story for a thousand years. I want to meet this man who saved me. May I descend to Earth as a human, so that I can reunite with Xu Xian? White Snake, are you sure? Although you have cared for him these one thousand years, he has no memories of what occurred between you. I know, but I want to experience the human world. You are a snake monster. You will not be accepted there. This one thousand years, I too have cultivated the energy to take on human form. No one will know my identity. Even so, you will still be at risk. Once you go down to Earth, I can no longer protect you. Queen Mother, forgive me, but you know, once I decide something, I won't change my mind. Okay, you may go. But no, you will experience hardship. Is is the world full of suffering? There are eight kinds of suffering in the world: the suffering of life itself, the suffering of old age, the suffering of disease, the suffering of death, the suffering of love and separation, the suffering of resentment and hatred, the suffering of longing. And the suffering of body and mind out of balance. We cannot escape or hide. The only thing we can control is our mentality when facing hardship. White Snake thus descended to Earth as the human being named by Sujin. There, she experienced life's ups and downs while constantly searching for Xu Xian. Then one day, she met some hunters in the mountains, snake traders who captured snakes in order to sell them. As she peered into one of the cages, 
a green snake captured by Sujin's attention. I know you can understand what I'm saying. Please help me. After so many years, I've never had a good job. No, if you help me, 我会报答你的，求求你，我还不想死。我可以救你，但我不需要你报答我。同为蛇族，我实在不忍心看你就这样死去。谢谢姐姐的救命之恩。我救了你，你可以离开了，只是不要伤害其他无辜的生命。不用跟着我了，我一个人习惯了。不行，我要报恩，你需要做什么，吩咐我便是了。你倒是有我当年的样子，可是你看看你现在这个样子，你能为我做什么呢？没关系。我可以和你学，请让我跟在你的身边吧。抱歉，我一个人习惯了，而且，而且我正在寻找一个人。你就让我留在你的身边，这样你就不是一个人了。Bai Sujin became Green Snake's friend, protector, and teacher. They traveled the world together while Bai Sujin taught the green snake how to become human. Now, Bai Sujin had a partner called Zhao Qing and was no longer alone. They experienced thousands of hardships together until one day they came across a man by a lake. A tall tower is reflected in the lake. The willow silk on the bank of the river glides gently over the lake. In the slight breeze, one can feel the cold air that peach and plum blossoms are afraid of, and the first coming of spring. You 快看，前面就是有名的断桥。哇，姐姐，我们终于到了。这边好美呀、啊，嗯，但是为什么要叫它断桥呢？这个桥没有断掉呀。小青啊，虽然这个桥叫做断桥，但是桥并没有断过，桥上总是有人不停的走动。这里的湖泊、山水源源不绝，美不胜收。也不枉费我们离开山洞，云游四海，经历千辛万苦来到这里。呀，姐姐，雨越下越大了，我们先在这片柳树下躲雨吧。姐姐，你还好吗？小青。明明已经不会再对其他人心动，为何今天遇见这先生，内心却掀起波澜呢？先生，没想到回家的路上竟然开始下起小雨，难得忙碌中还能拨出点时间欣赏这片秋林的江山。哎，可是雨越下越大，我先赶紧到柳树下避避雨。呀，先生您好。没注意到有两位小姐在躲雨，在下十里了。我们姐妹俩本在湖边欣赏这美景，谁知道突然就下雨了，所以才到这柳树下避雨的。哎，两位姑娘待会要去哪了？为了陪你，我送送两位吧。哇，谢谢先生，我们要去红楼。请问先生要去哪呢？在下要去北门，天下雨越下越大，柳树下不能多雨了。哎，你们用我的白雨伞吧，雨越下越大。我先加秋胶船。呀
。雨越来越大了，我们三个人共用一把伞吧。The oars glided past the white duckweed piles. The lake scenery in February is a human favorite. The wind and rain reflect each other on the lake. 太好了，雨终于停了。是啊，天气晴朗的样子，就像鱼儿在山水间游玩，领着山川美景，如同洗净一般清爽。雨后微风。如同那凉爽的清澈感，透过衣裳传达到肌肤。用来表示如此山川美景，非常适合。这位先生沉稳得当，不会过问女儿家身世。哎，青儿，你去跟先生说一下，麻烦让先生改日到红楼一句。呃，请问，姑娘贵姓？姐姐姓白，先生名姓许。对不对？在下姓许，小姐是怎么知道的？<笑>您那把雨伞上不是有大大的一个“许”字吗？明天请先生早点来，免得姐姐酒后哦。After sending off the guests, the lonely hills could only watch the plum blossoms fall in silence. Lucky for the boatman. He had bought a pot of wine, and got really drunk on the shore while watching the windy lake. After a few days, Xu Xian came to the Red Mansion to visit Bai Su Jin and Zhao Qing, and thus began their romance in the human world. 先生还没有结婚，姐姐也还没有出嫁。我们姐妹俩也是孤单生活，没有亲人依靠。姐姐想与先生您共度余生，结为百年佳偶，一世一双人。嗯，不知道先生愿不愿意呢？啊，能娶白姑娘那真是太棒了。只是，我现在没有带聘礼，怎么能跟小姐姐婚呢？哇！不用准备聘礼了，先生的那把伞就当做是定亲的信物吧。刚好今天是一个适合结婚的好日子，我来准备需要的东西。待会点蜡烛后，你们就当拜天地了吧。The fate of a thousand years is like a line; it can be long or short. Hiding from the rain under an umbrella is like. Seeing each other for the first time and forever all at once, after a thousand years of destiny, they can be together. A thousand years of waiting. This encounter is like souls attracting each other, impossible to separate. It is better to be a pair of innocent lovebirds together, than two lonely legends apart. Xu Xian, a doctor, has opened up a clinic with the Bai sisters. Business is good, and they are content. But to some, humans and monsters should not live together, even if their souls are bound. Fa Hai is now reincarnated as a monk, wandering around the world as a monster hunter. Today, 镇上来了一只名叫白素贞的蛇妖。他是千年蛇妖所修炼成型的。前几日与一位医者许仙相恋，准备结为夫妻，在这个小镇生活。太荒唐了，人妖殊途。我这就准备法器前去讨伐那两只蛇妖。没想到今日病人如此之多。娘子辛苦了，去休息吧。谢谢你对我这么好。不要忘了，我们快主板正式婚礼了。小青，换我干冰，你先带娘子进去休息吧。好的。先生，和我非常相爱，我们可以一起庆祝喜事
，生病了可以互相照顾，寂寞了也有个人可以陪伴。现在我才知道，为何人们如此留恋这滋味。倒也不枉费我人间走这一回。姐姐，婚服已经快制作完成了，嗯，姐姐要看吗？你好，请问需要帮助吗？贫僧法号法海啊，原来是法海老师傅，今天过来是为了木画吗？看到施主满身黑气，印堂发黑，他是被怪物所缠上的。怪物？怪物在哪儿？许先生可以借一步说话吗？老僧，我已经调查清楚了。你那美丽的妻子是一条千年的蛇妖所幻化而成的。不，我的妻子是一位善良的人。许先生，老师傅说的话令人不敢相信。许先生，你是一位好人，所以我才特地从金山寺下来救你。如果继续执迷不悟的话，你会受到很大的伤害的。如果他要害我，他为什么要对我这么好，要爱我？哎。我会证明的，请您在婚礼当天将这瓶雄黄粉撒在他的婚礼服上，然后您将知道我所说的全都是真的。白小杰是一位温柔婉约的人，我会把他放在婚服上，证明你是错的。Time flies quickly, and it's the day of Bai Sujin and Xu Xian are getting married. 小青。婚服上有雄黄粉，雄黄粉，雄黄黄粉会让妖物现出原形的。娘子，娘子，小青，快掩护我，绝不能让相公看见我的蛇身。许先生，姐姐还在换婚服呢，此刻落见先生不符合婚嫁规矩呀、啊。可我刚刚听见娘子的呼叫声。烦请先生先在房外稍候姐姐。许仙呀，快进去这红罗章看看。这里边就是你的醒酒汤，大胆看看你那千娇百媚的妻子吧！该死的，我不应该怀疑的，但是我要这么小出这种以后，别难过，我的妻子，我在这里。不，不要！天哪，是死！来人呢？快来人！请看看你的妻子吧，看看她是如何的美丽动人。你还记得你说过的话吗？你说你会保护他，和他结婚。你说你会永远爱他。你看看你和一条蛇之间拥有多么美好的爱情。不，他，他不是我的妻子，我的妻子。不，不，相公，我。白蛇呀，你看到了吗？多么荒谬的爱情啊！你毁了我姐姐的婚礼，我一定饶不了你！<笑>一只法力低等的小青蛇也敢攻击我，找死姐姐，我亲爱的姐姐，谢谢你这几年来的照顾。从我们初次相遇，到你千年的等待，我看见了，也理解了。<咳>我是时候该走了。小青，拜托不要，不要离开我。白蛇呀。看看你的四周吧，你周围的人都因你而死，而你却还苟活在这个世上。我不应该来这个世上找他，不，不是你，你把他从我身边带走了，我会为他报仇的。
哈哈，你无法伤害到我。为了能够顺利抓到你，我可是寻找了这世界上最强大的法器。我将把你锁进这妖塔中，让你的身体和灵魂遭受那无尽的折磨和痛苦。Mother, the world is too bitter. My friend was killed because she tried to help me. My love was scared to death by my true form. This calamity is your destiny. You've experienced the seven emotions and six desires of the world. When flowers bloom and fall, both their origin and their death are carried by the wind. It's too bitter, Queen Mother. I can't bear this pain. This fated relationship between you is not yet over, but you must be willing to continue the journey. The fate between us is like a candle wick. No matter how hot it burns, it will not break apart. Then are you ready to face him as you are? He knows what I really am. But he vowed to love me forever and protect me. I believe him. Then have you chosen, my child? I have chosen. Then look, and behold, I have brought your love back to life. Fai, 杀了我的朋友，关了我的娘子。我今天定将你挫骨扬灰！凭你个医生的力量，怎么可能打得过我、啊？今天的我已经不再是我了，我已发誓，今日一定要将我娘子救去，不让事不为人。My snake, you have embraced your whole self and claimed your destiny. This magic will make your human form immortal. Go, Shushiana awaits you at the broken bridge.
beautiful to humans, but hideous to us. She was entirely ours, but entirely her own. We loved her, but loathed her. She was mortal, but born from monsters. She was our sister. She was both christened and damned as protector. Medo. Medusa. And before this, only the gods were a witness to her story. The full story. And like many stories, it begins with a woman. Suffering. And marriage. The time has finally come and the deal is almost done. What time? We must prepare extensively for him. Where should we begin? What are we preparing for? He finds her hair beautiful. What are we discussing? What are, you, what are we preparing for? Your future. No, I thought I had more... Time. In a week's time, you will be married. In matrimony. To Poseidon. One of the most powerful gods. You will be a bride. A wife. A servant. Our parents have gone through a lot of trouble to secure this marriage. A union between a god and a human. Why is that so significant? A human born from sea monsters? A miracle and a tragedy. A marriage to the god of the sea would only benefit us all. That includes you. A chance to unite our parents, the ancient sea dwellers, and the current gods. As allies, we would be more powerful than most. We will begin to prepare you. You would never, you would have, never to have to worry about, about your love being, being true. true. You would you never, never have, have to question what you should, should do. do. You would, you would just, just do whatever, whatever he, says. he says. No, no need to, to worry. worry. You, you would just be his. his. How? I don't want to be his. Why does it have to be me? Poseidon finds you intoxicating. Your dark waves captivate him. He has seen you brushing it. He has been watching me? You are scared. Frightened. But imagine for a second no one wanting you at all. Mortal girl. Imagine that you looked like me. Or me. Like us. Like, like us. us. I could never be like you. You are... Monsters. Yes. You are monsters. Horrifying and abusive. You have no regard for the safety of mortals, including me. You are monsters, and I could never be you. Disrespect will not be tolerated any longer. Remember to whom you speak. What is this? It is mine. A book of a goddess. How do you have it? You dare to insult us, but you steal from the gods? Thief? No, I would never. This is mine. Explain. I can't. I, I refuse to tell you. You must. There is a temple in the town of mortals. It is for the goddess Athena. She is the goddess of wisdom and- uh, We know who she is. This is a grave mistake. I seek to become one of her priestesses. I have been studying. Why? I would be working in the name of Athena with privileges and freedoms that other mortal women lack. A woman has been training me in the temple. She offered to teach me. She says I could be very valuable. I don't want to marry. If I did, shouldn't it be because of love? That is not your reality. There are several, there are reasons, several for reasons for love, and they, and they are, are not always, always enough. enough. You, you are, are focused, focused on, on romance, romance, and it will, and it will leave, leave you incomplete. I won't stay. I will be a priestess. You must marry. I will run. If you run, 
You should pray that it is us who finds you first. There are much worse things that could find you. We will begin by offering a lock of your hair to the gods at the first sight of dawn, sister. Prepare yourself, Medusa. Wait! Please. Can I have tomorrow to say goodbye to the temple, to the people I've, I've met? After tomorrow, I will come willingly. Fine. Really? Yes. But heed our warning. We will be watching. Venturing alone into Athens, a city of mortals worshipping the gods, with a farewell on her lips and a book in her hand. Today, it appears, her only friend is sorrow. Now arriving at Temple of Athena. Sir? Do you know who these worshippers are and whose favor they seek today? You haven't heard? I have been home with my family these last few days. A war is approaching. May the gods protect us. Why are people warring? Currency? Power? Revenge? Why else do people fight? I suppose. Do you know what I think? I think it's really a war of the gods. <laughs> Why do you think that? The tides are rising and power is in the air. The winds roar and the clouds are closing in. But that's just my theory. They will come from the sea. Everyone must begin the worship to Poseidon. Oh. Is there a problem? Nothing. I mean, Poseidon is the god of the sea, but shouldn't the worship begin to Athena? She is the goddess of war strategy. You would challenge Poseidon. I would challenge anyone if it meant that I could pass on wisdom and knowledge like Athena would want. I see. Well, if your husband does not know of the war, I suggest you inform him at once. I'm not married. And why not? Excuse me? Oh, I'm not trying to pry. It's just strange that a young woman such as yourself would be unwed. A young woman can offer more than just marriage. I just... Worried for your protection. Just trying to watch out for you. Especially with such opinions. Thank you, but I have enough people watching me. You? Medusa, you are late. I... Well, excuse me. Of course. You should be on your way, Medusa. A girl with dangerous opinions. Medusa, you should hurry to the temple. I have business to attend to. I will follow you soon. But immediately. Do you have nothing better to do? I'm not sure I know what you mean. You have done enough. She is my priestess. Don't you realize you're not strong enough to control a girl like that? Marriage will be a blessing for her. How dare you deny my power? This war between us will continue. It is true. She will make an excellent addition to my collection of brides. I simply adore her. Like that other young woman, Cornets? You wanted her for your collection until I transformed her into a raven. I haven't forgotten. You will only make Medusa suffer. I actually care for her. It is too late. Her sisters are already ready to retrieve her. You would be wise to step aside. I am still worshipped here. And don't forget what happened to Athens after your last victory. I am not afraid of you. I have defeated you before. Challenge. Good. It'll make things more interesting. 
You are in danger. You're following me. You must come with us. You are the only dangers I see. You should surrender yourself now. You said I could have today. The god. The goddess. They see you. We sense the danger. If you do not come you with us now, you do not come with us now, it, it will, will be, be harder. harder. This, this must, must end, end at, once. at once. I'm only saying goodbye. Poseidon and Athena have been feuding for a very long time. Their history is too long. Poseidon is one of the three most powerful gods. Brother of Zeus. And Athena is the daughter of Zeus, his most beloved daughter, actually. Be silent. When the gods battle, they do it fiercely. Their bickering has nothing to do with, with me. you. You should hope not. Hope is not enough. So you will marry Poseidon. We will take you by force. You will not. Get away, creatures. You are on the foot of the temple of Athena. Unless you want to feel the wrath of Athena, I suggest you leave. You, you would, would watch, watch her, her suffer, suffer as a prize? I do not answer to you. Why don't you let her decide? She does not know what the real consequences are. Poseidon will not rest. Stop speaking for me. I... I will protect you. Against a vengeful god? How? Trust me. I will protect you. Trust me. And she did. Trust her. She is on her own. For now. I have justified my family. Yes. I have rejected them. Yes. What will I do without them? You will be a priestess of Athena. How will I protect myself against a vengeful god? I will protect you. I told you to trust me. I do. But I won't be around monsters. Any longer of any kind. You won't have to. So I just wait for him to appear. No. I just wait for him to take me? Is there really a war between the gods? You should not be concerned. You have a goddess. If you are so worried, call upon her. Okay. Goddess Athena, please, I need you. I need your protection, your guidance, and most of all, your wisdom. Please, I need you. I call upon you. Okay. It's done. That's it? Nothing happened? She's right in front of you. Where? Right here. Is she invisible? I don't remember reading about that in any book. She's in front of you. You? No. That's impossible. I've been with you for a year. You've been training me for a year. I would know. Then don't believe me. It's just... Not feasible. Well, you know that gods and goddesses may appear to mortals in human forms. You've heard the stories. Your joking is cruel. This is not a joke. I am the goddess Athena. You are the goddess Athena. Why? Why what? Why everything? One question at a time. Why are you here? This is my favorite temple. Now why are you here with me? A mortal girl, born from sea creatures, and you stumbled upon my temple. 
praying, horrified because of the whispers of marriage to Poseidon. So this is about Poseidon? Maybe in the beginning. But then it became about you. I wanted to see that you were not a monster yourself. I could never be a monster. Like them. They are evil. I am not evil. I know. You have talent and intelligence. A marriage to an arrogant god is beneath you. So you decided to save me? Yes. So that I could be your priestess? Yes. What if I don't want to be a priestess? Why would you say that? You lied to me. I saved you from a life of misery. I know. I'm scared. I know. But you no longer need to feel that way. Put your faith, all of it, in me. And of course she did. What could you expect from a girl who grew up as an outsider? She put all of it, all of her faith, into, into a, a goddess. goddess. Faith in a goddess. Leaving another god in anger. The only thing worse is how the faith grew. Into love. They were in love. But love is not enough. Reading. About you, of course. You never have to read about me again. You can just ask. I like reading. It helps me memorize. You will be smarter than me soon. So humorous. I wish I could read about you. You can ask too. Don't you ever want what your sisters have? What your family has? What do they have? Power. Never. If power means that I am a monster, I never want it. Power is everything. Power is not everything, and as the goddess of wisdom, you should know that. You are advising me. You are proving to be a very worthy investment every day. An investment? My best one. Well, I hope that I am more than that. Why? Because. An unfinished statement? Isn't it obvious? No. It doesn't matter. It does. I love you. You love me? Yes, I love you. Isn't it obvious? But I know that with you, with the goddess, it doesn't matter because you are worshipped and praised and I am just a folktale. I love you too. You do? Yes. And you're not just saying that because of this feud with Poseidon. This is about only us. Good. Will you stay with me? I thought you didn't want to be married. I did not want to be married to a man who I don't know, who would buy me from my family, who would expect respect and give none. I know you. I love you. You saved me. We should celebrate. 
what will we tell the other priestesses we're celebrating? That Athena won another battle. Do you hear that? What? One of my shrines has been attacked. I need it in battle. Come with me. I know it will change your mind about power. No, I'm still studying. I am not you. I do not battle. The goddess you are studying is in love with you. And you can't take a moment? I'm not a fighter. I have seen monsters fight. Viciously. And they do not show mercy. You don't have to be afraid. As long as I'm here, I won't be. I love you. Farewell, my love. Hello? Hello, is anyone here? Hello. The High Priestess is out for a moment, but maybe I can assist you. Maybe you can. I can assist in your worship to the Goddess Athena. While the war rages on, all prayers are necessary. I chose to pray to another. And who would that be? Poseidon. Well, that is also an option. Is there anything else I can help you with? Don't you recognize me? Oh. Yes, you are the man who told me about the war. Yes, yes. <laughs> well? Well what? Well, would you like to debate again? Otherwise, I'm not sure why you're here. Again, you demonstrate dangerous opinions, Medusa. If there is nothing else I can help you with, I suggest that you go. Engaged to be married to the god. Poseidon. That engagement has been terminated. Well, that's not how this works. I'm not sure what you're talking about. I've been watching you. With her. The priestess. You love her. You are a servant of Poseidon. No, I am Poseidon. You should go. We are engaged to be married. You were promised to me. I was not a part of these arrangements. You were supposed to be committed to me, and now you throw your love in my face. What do you want from me? Come with me. As my bride. Athena will be back soon, and she will protect me. Athena will not be back anytime soon. I will not come with you. A woman who defies me is nothing but a foolish monster. Why would you say that? It is how you were born and how you should be treated as a disgusting monster. I am not a monster, and I will not come with you. We will be married. Remember that she cannot protect you. An assault on an innocent. Because of foolish, godly competition. The innocent appeared broken. She could not even bear to move. Her goddess had been waiting. And waiting. For her to get better. But after days, she was desperate. Please, Medusa, speak to me. I love you. I want things back to the way they were. But there is no answer. Medusa was too hurt. So, so the, the goddess, goddess decided, decided to, to take, take control. control. I will make sure no one wants you again. I will make sure you can protect yourself. You will have power. Athena? Athena, help me! I don't know what's happening. I am taking your pain away. It hurts. Why? 
What did you do to me? You were wrong before. Power is the most important tool a person can have. And I gave it to you. What are you talking about? Now you are powerful, and we can be together. What did you do to me? Only I will want you now. No one will bother you again. Why did you do this to me? I love you. Trust me, this is for the best. Trust you? You are disgusting. How could you? How dare you? This is for your own good. My good? Or yours? Where is Medusa? You have ruined everything! You wanted to compete with me once again, I warned you. Did you have to hurt her? You should have hurt me instead. I have hurt you. And I made sure no one would want her again. Unless serpent hair arouses you. You made her into a gorgon. Yes. But you're right, I no longer want her. The marriage is terminated. Leave before I... We are more alike than you may believe. We both have done what we thought was best. I loved her. And how do you feel now? I loathe her. She has left me. She has insulted you. Great. But I also want her back. Do what you must. What does that mean? You are a goddess. You have power. I have power. I saved her, and she insulted me. How dare she? Now what do you want? Her head. And I know exactly how to do it. A demigod. Named Perseus. He would be foolish enough to battle a monster he can't see. Perseus was a protector of his mother. Against a lustful king. A demigod. Given a quest. To kill Medusa. With the help of the gods. Hades, Hermes, Hephaestus, and Athena. Cap of invisibility. Winged sandals. A sword. And a bronze shield. A king used him. And the gods used him too? Now a shield. A reflection. Will be the answer. Hello? Hello? I'm lost. Can you help me? Stay back. Are you in danger? Don't come any closer. Please. This is the only shelter I've seen for miles. I am a monster. You do not want to come near me. I have said please, and I've treated you with respect. Now, girl, you will help me. I demand it. No. He is dead. Is stone? I did that. No, it's impossible. Who is there? Don't come any closer. You did this. 
I told him to back away. He wouldn't listen. You're dangerous. Who are you? You're a monster. You need to be stopped. No, please. I do not wish to hurt anyone. You're lying. No, I didn't know what I was capable of. So you'll die willingly. To save others from your power. How can you ask me to die? The gods demand it. And it's the right thing. The gods? What gods? This is my quest. I'll show you mercy. A quicker death if you surrender. What gods? You pretend to be innocent, but look at you! Look at me? You haven't looked at me this whole time. No. Look at me. I know you want to see. You want to see what I look like. You are a murderer. A monster. I am innocent. You are a pawn in a goddess's scheme. I pity you. You were sent here to die. So look at me. No. No. I am not a monster, despite what you see. I do not want to kill you, I just want to be safe. You're different than they said you'd be. I am sorry you are involved in this. I must kill you. I will not fight upon. Go. Before you die. I can protect myself. And I will defend myself. Perseus the Pawn. He has completed his quest. The head of Medusa. Our, our sister. Is given to the goddess Athena. She regrets what she has done. As she should. Our sister is dead. Just when she became ours. What have you done? You have killed someone that you claim to love. She disrespected me. She dishonored me. So you believe you are justified. We warned you not to involve her. I love her. This was just a game to the gods. I'll bring her back. To make her suffer again? No, I will fix this. She will come back to me. Medusa! I'm alive. I am not a monster. No, you're not. How? I brought you back. Why would you do that? I love you. You had me killed. An unfortunate decision. An unfortunate violence done against me. I was thinking irrationally. I let my emotions cloud my judgment. But now things can go back to the way they were. You dare suggest that? Be careful, creature. Don't forget to whom you speak. 
Gorgons, this discussion is not for you. Medusa, you are a mortal. Who needed a purpose and direction. You were my sisters, and you abused me and controlled me just as the gods have. You must forgive us. We did what we thought was best. I cannot. Please, leave. You cannot. We will leave you. I missed you. Do not touch me. I know you are hurt. How could you do this to me? I was doing what was best for us. I miscalculated. You tried to control me. I was only loving you. Love is not possession or pain or suffering or manipulation. Foolish mortal, it is only possession and pain and suffering. Who told you that? Do you still love me? No. Liar. I do not wish to upset you. But we will never be together again. I do not love you. Then why are you still here? Just to insult me? I could fix this! You could adore me again! No. Fine. I will not beg you. Go. I need something from you. You reject me and now you need me? Do you still love me? Yes. This is how you will prove it. Why should I? Sometimes we do things for the people we love, even if they don't love us back. What a horrible, mortal concept. What do you want? I want you to change me back. I want you to change me back into a monster. Why? Because I was safe. You want to have power, just like me, just like your family. No, I don't. I don't want power over others. I want the power to make my own choices, something you, Poseidon, and my family never gave me. If I do this, I won't change you back. You will be a Gorgon, a monster, forever. I know. You will be hideous, unloved and alone. No one will control me. What will you do? I will protect myself. I will do whatever I please. I will be free. Farewell, Medusa. Why are you still here? You truly don't forgive us? Now that you are like us? Now that we are truly sisters? We were always sisters. You just didn't accept me. We accept you now. It is too late. But I do understand you now. Will you come with us? No. We cannot help you. If you are on your own. Goodbye, sisters. This will not be the last you see of us, Mado. I know. She was beautiful to us. But hideous to humans. She was entirely ours but entirely her own. 
We loved her, but loathed her. She was mortal, but born from monsters. She was our sister. She was both christened and damned as protector. Medo. Medusa. She was never ours. She was always her own. And now, she could choose. begin with Once Upon a Time, the best beginning for a story, it seems too tame for such a devilish tale. And yet, I do not wish to frighten you. So perhaps I shall begin with a love story. Nathaniel and I were in love since we formed a connection over playing in the grass as children. I loved to sit and listen to him as he read me his poems and told me about his dreams. But a change came over him after we got engaged. He became darker, angrier, moodier. At first, I pass it off as my fiance having a surly Mr. Darcy-like disposition, which could be a close cousin of charm. But now, as our wedding approaches, his poetry, which I once adored, has become tedious and overly dramatic. I fear my ears may fall into the fire should I subject myself to more of it. I did feel guilt, though, as he was my fiancé. Something was troubling him. And as the closest to him, it fell upon me to care for him. I was trying to be a good future wife. I was, but I was lonely. Oh, darling, I read a sonnet earlier that I thought might be lovely to be read at our wedding. Where did those books my brother brought me go? I, I've taken the liberty of putting them away. Did you store them at your house? I really think you'd find the sonnet fitting. I found it enchanting. I see no reason as to why you should ignore your fiancé's work in favor of Shakespeare. Why should another man's poetry be prioritized at your wedding? Of course. I did not mean to ignore your writing, darling. I had not considered your poetry for the wedding, but I shall now think on it. Good. Besides, I do not think you require presents from your brother. After all, I buy you anything you might want. I bought you that ring, yes? The first gift you gave me to show is no longer your childhood playmate. And, while you have not been my childhood playmate for quite some time, I think perhaps another gift is in order? Nathaniel, what is it? <gasps> Open it! Beautiful little doll. Oh, she's so lovely. Isn't she a darling? I could not take my eyes off of her in the shop. And I thought she would feel the same. So, we have no need for Lothair's gifts. No, I suppose not.
Would you stop that insufferable clacking? Can you not see that I'm working? Oh dear, I apologize. I did not mean to disturb you. Very well. Tell me, what did you think of my latest poem? Well, I found the images to be very vivid. Nathaniel, this poem is all about the Sandman. I cannot help but wonder why you lent so many pages to a children's story. He has returned to me in my dreams. Returned? He has haunted me since I watched him murder my father. Do you mean the figure from the old nurse's tales is responsible for your father's death? He is not a mere figure. He is real. The Sandman. You do not believe me. Assuredly, I believe you, but you must admit that this is a fantastical notion. How can this be so? And now you ask me to defend the horrors I saw as a child. Children often mistake what they see. I was not mistaken! Growing up, I, I saw little of my father. After the evening meal, my father would smoke his pipe while drinking a large glass of beer. On such evenings, mother was very sad. As when the clock struck nine, she would say, Come, darling, come off to bed. The Sandman is coming. And as a child, I wished to know the Sandman. I decided to conceal myself in my father's room to spy. But nearer drew the footsteps before the door opened with a creak. In front of my father stood the Sandman. His features were drawn up by some dreadful con Repulsive pain into an ugly, repulsive, satanic-like mask where two piercing, greenish, cat-like eyes glittered. I screamed and tumbled out of my hiding place. The Sandman seized me. You little brute, now we've got eyes, a beautiful pair of children's eyes. And then, thrusting his hands into the flames, he took out some red-hot grains and was about to throw them into my eyes. It was then that all around me grew black. A, a sudden pain shot through all my nerves. I knew... Nothing more. It was about a year later when the Sandman returned. The clock struck nine. Be a good boy and keep quiet, Mother called after me, but I could not close my eyes. And then I heard a scream. I rushed into my father's room and in front of the hearth lay my father, dead. His face burned black and fearfully Distorted. I lost my senses. And then I awakened. My mother was bending over me. Is the Sandman still here? No, my dear. He's gone. He'll not hurt you. This is truly a fantastical notion. For I recall when your father was placed in his coffin... His features were gentle and mild, as they had been when he was alive. But please forgive me that I, a simple girl, presume in any way to indicate to you what I truly think of such an inward strife. Inward? Perhaps, in your anguish, 
your childish mind associated this tragic event with the gruesome sandman of the old nurse's tale that used to frighten you so. You do not take what I say as true. I have only to relate to you the most terrible moment of my youth for you to thoroughly understand that a mysterious destiny has hung a dark veil of clouds about my life, which I shall perhaps only break through when I die. I'm so sorry, my love. Of course I should want to relieve you of suffering. It's only my ignorance that I ignored it. Is it not the woman's job to know her beloved better than he knows himself? Certainly, darling. And I have failed at that. I am truly sorry. You care about Shakespeare and couplets, not the horrors that haunt me still. I find it repulsive the way you pass off the horror of my childhood as mere fiction. Look at her. She knows her place. She is quiet and still, graceful and obedient. She sings when I desire and is silent when I do not. I am sorry. I shall try better. Sister, you've been reading for seven years now, and I think you might benefit from a meal. Only seven. Which of the books is that? I imagine you've exhausted all of the Shakespeare already. It's one of Nathaniel's poems. Where did that Queen Mab poem I bought you go? I know it's yours, but since I bought it, I thought I also might read it. Nathaniel put those books away. Where did he put them? I don't know. Nathaniel said I'm only to read his poetry. As my fiancé, he should provide what I indulge in. If all men thought this way, the publishing houses would go out of business. It's all right, Lothair, really. If he continues to command your attention in such a fashion, please allow me to have a word. My fiancé wishes me to read his poetry. Clara, is there something you are not telling me? I truly do not understand. No, why you do not to... understand. Look at me. Our inheritance will not last forever. And Nathaniel's social standing cannot be ignored. I also love him. Deeply. And as our childhood companion, you do too. I do hold Nathaniel in the highest esteem. But he is not my sister. You are all I have in this world, and I wish to see you treated by a fiancé in the same way. You will always come first. My fiancé must come first. I simply worry that you are losing your voice. Perhaps the woman's position requires no voice. Clara, come on a walk to the garden. I desire fresh air. Of course. Allow me to fetch a shawl. Nathaniel, I know that we had agreed not to have a party after our wedding, but in light of recent events, I cannot help but wonder if a celebration might benefit you. Perhaps lift your spirits. I do not think that is appropriate. Why not? There's not been a party held at your estate since we were children. I see no reason as to why my new wife should be trotted out for other men to gaze upon. It would be a party for the marriage, not a promenade. Why would you wish to be celebrated? Is being wed not enough? Being wed is plenty, but I thought a celebration might take your mind off such distressing thoughts. Enough! It is improper. It is bad enough you insist on spending so much time with your brother.
He's here. No fair? Why, yes, I believe he's been reading in the garden for a spell. Oh, quiet! Darling, what is it? Quiet! He is near! The Sandman? Darling, that is simply impossible. I said quiet! Nathaniel, I wish you would make some attempt to forget the Sandman. Convince yourself he has no power over you. I only meant... I know what you meant! You meant you do not believe me! You think the Sandman, the demon who has haunted me since youth, is fiction! You have seen the anguish he has brought to me! Have you no sympathy? Have you no feelings? You inanimate, accursed automaton! <laughs> Are you all right? Yes. But my ring. Did you hit your head? No. My ring broke. Are you injured? No. <sighs> Lothar, this is ridiculous! Stand down, you fantastic crack-brained fool! I must follow tradition, and in this situation, I am glad of it. Are you referring to a duel, Lothar? Lothar! Go inside, Clara. Be a good girl, and be quiet. This does not concern you.
But your hands, dear Olympia, they are cold as ice. Perhaps this dance will warm you. Oh, Olympia, you glorious heavenly lady. Never have I known a woman of your visage. Through you, true perfection is realized. Olympia is quite uncanny. Her figure is regular and so are her features, but in her eyes seems a singular look of fixity and lifelessness, and surely one cannot overlook the peculiarity of her movements. They look as if they were dependent upon some wound-up clockwork. <laughs> <laughs> recognize your true depth. You utter few words, it is true, but you need only say little for me to understand that you share my affections. And I will have no other woman. Ah, ah. I am most gracious for your affirmations, Olympia. The connection I feel between us cannot help but grow stronger every moment we meet. one with whom I can share this part of myself with. I need you, Olympia. In fact, I love you. Ah, ah. Now that I've said it out loud, I realize there is no one else for me. I shall return momentarily, my dearest, but first there is something I must retrieve. Ah, 
Lydia! Beloved sister, you must have had a nightmare. Whatever has caused you this fright cannot hurt you anymore. You are safe, Clara. Indeed, though you gave us both a fright. But you are here with me now, my love. No, no, you stay away from me. Come now, Clara, surely you jest. Whatever is the matter, sister, why did you scream so? While I was asleep, I dreamt of a ball. There was a beautiful singer, perfect in all the ways I never could be. And you loved her, Nathaniel. You forgot that there was a Clara in the world whom you had once loved. That is not what is happening here. Please, allow me to finish. You sat beside her for hours while she listened to your poems, your visions. So happy were you that she neither grew tired nor attempted to occupy herself. Instead, she remained without moving. The whole of her attention fixed ardently on you. And now I see, this is what you desire from me. No more than a mechanical doll. Choose your words wisely, dear. You know not of that which you speak. Your nightmare has upset you and you are unwell. That is all. But that is not all. The Sandman haunts your nightmares, but he resides in my waking hours. For you have become the figure that you fear most. You horrid woman! All I have ever sought is your comfort and well-being, but now you punish me with your accusations. Have I not suffered enough at the hands of cruelty? My father would smoke his pipe, drinking a large glass of beer at the same time. On such evenings, mother was very sad, as when the clock struck nine, she would say, come children, come off to bed. Come, the sad man is coming. As my father bent down over the flames, his whole appearance suddenly changed. He looked like the sad man. On the floor in front of the smoking hearth lay my father, dead. His face burned black and fearfully distorted. You were just a child. Speak no more! I beg you! You were protecting yourself. But we can be more than our nightmares, Nathaniel. You cold-hearted snake! You wish to destroy me! Look into my eyes, Nathaniel. You know I do not wish to destroy you. But do you see in that reflection yourself? Or do you see the Sandman? Nathaniel, you must face the truth, or you will destroy yourself. Ah! You little brute! You puppet in the hands of the forces against me! You have ruined me! Spin round, wooden doll, spin round! It is true. A mysterious destiny has hung a dark veil of clouds about your life. And for that, you have my sympathy. 
But I will not let the Sandman possess me as he has you. I sold our house and moved. I met a young man a year afterwards, and we lived in a lovely little home, far away from the tower in the garden. I have been blessed with two sons, neither of whom are haunted by any demons, real or false. In my dreams, which I never fully recall upon waking, are dark uneasy and full of shadows. But when I wake, often to a small child sitting on my bed giving a delighted cry of mother, I forget all about it. It's only in the dark that I remember. And the dark is always followed by the light. It must be followed by the light. <laughs> 